and G-SAFE's honor to introduce our first scholarship recipient, Eve Folstad. Learning to love yourself is not an easy process. Like many teenagers, I have struggled to accept myself as I am. Not only have I learned to accept myself, but others' opinions of me. As a strong advocate for mental health, feminist movements, and the LGBTQ community, I have had my fair share of hate. Accepting that this hate was not something I deserved was my first step in becoming a more balanced person. While everyone seems to have an opinion of what is good and right in the world, mine is easy to follow. LGBTQ youth do not deserve the hate and ridicule they endure for factors they cannot control. To help with that, I became an original member of my school's first Gay Straight Alliance. While my membership is close to its final curtain call, I know my journey in supporting the LGBTQ community around me is just starting. It gives me great pride to know I can make a difference in the lives of others just by being an accepting and non-judgmental human. Accepting others for their differences makes accepting mine a bit easier. As our GSA PRISM continued to me, I learned that no matter what sexuality or gender you identify as, there will be struggles that everyone can relate to. Facing bullying, self-confidence issues, mental health struggles, Dysfunctional families and discrimination of some sort are all negatives that my group has been able to discuss without judgment clouding our perceptions of each other. The confidentiality that PRISM keeps is also a haven for many students who have not been able to have open discussions with the other people in their lives. I love to highlight how our group makes positive change. We bring a sense of family and community to those in northern Wisconsin who have very few other people. We explore topics that are less talked about due to the taboos of where we live. As an organization, we have prioritized education, and I have taken this further by becoming active on social media. Our Instagram is small but mighty. Using this platform, I have been able to increase engagement from our members, staff, and supporters we share stories from the Trevor Foundation, Planned Parenthood, and many other movements, all while striving to use our social media for educational purposes. We provide an environment where people can be their true selves. By giving the LGBT community a voice outside of school, I am in charge of not only keeping those who wish to be anonymous a secret, but giving the group as a whole a voice. This means that I listen to the group to know what to share as stories and posts. Our group this year is rather young, so we are struggling to pin down a single topic we would like to advocate for. But last year, as I was trained on our social media accounts, I helped set up an educational platform where we discuss important days, topics, and people that we have highlighted in group discussions. This year, with such a young group, I have taken upon myself to give our platform a voice for sexual education as well. While it is not always a fun topic, it is very important for each and every single one of our members to know their rights, how to stay safe, and how to set boundaries. This is not only important because we contain members of the LGBTQ youth, but because every person deserves to have a solid education that will help them better themselves as people. I'm extremely proud of the work I have been able to do with the Schwamigan Prism Gay Straight Alliance and look forward to more adventures while advocating for the LGBTQ community in the future. My advocacy journey is taking me to University of Stout where I will study psychology. Thank you for the support in these endeavors.
This year we are excited to present our first annual Brave Space Award to Chu Fong Li and TJ Yang and their business Outcast Alterations. How's everyone doing? <laughs> All right, thank you so much for this award. Uh, my name is TJ, and my partner's name is Tu Fong Lee. Outcasts, outcasts are those who have been rejected by mainstream society. We are those who may not align or fit into the narrow lines of who society says is accepted or not. Outcasts are those who perhaps dream just a little too big for those around them. Outcasts are those who, their uniqueness isn't often appreciated by the world. Outcasts are people like my partner and I, or even some of the people in this room. Outcasts are those like my student, and I'm gonna say his name, David Kleba, whose life was unfortunately cut short all because the world didn't appreciate his uniqueness. And so outcast alterations not only focuses on, well, alterations, but it focuses on the acceptance for all bodies, all identities, and all genders. And with this nomination, we hope to inspire a young generation of queer, liberated, LGBTQ young people. We want to give a special thanks to G-SAFE and most importantly to the Black, Latinx, and Indigenous queer, trans, and non-binary friends, family, customers, and small businesses out there. Your joy, your love, and your existence is something profoundly healing. And to those that cannot be their full selves at home or in other spaces, for personal, historical, or systemic reasons, at all times or ever, we see you. And we see your power. We see your resilience. Please know that our shop, Outcast Alterations, is a space where you can always be your true self. And you never have to apologize for it. Thank you so much. Let's give a big thank you and recognize the Educator of the Year, Greta Voigt. Thank you so much to GSAFE. I am deeply humbled by this recognition from such an amazing organization that works tirelessly to create welcoming schools for our LGBTQ plus youth. Woo, it's been a tough year, actually a challenging couple of years. And tonight's theme of the mission continues feels so appropriate these days as we experience the barrage of attacks on queer and trans youth and morally outrageous rhetoric coming from some groups. It's hard to see so many injustices intentionally perpetrated upon vulnerable members of the community. Despite this, I have a message of hope, resilience, and progress. To start with though, let's look at a microcosm of the current culture war in my district, Waukesha. In our welcome back letter this year, our teachers were told that the district was pausing our equity work and that they were banning controversial and political signage. In the first days of the school year, we realized that meant banning safe space signs, anti-racist posters, Black Lives Matter signage, and rainbow flags. I literally watched them remove my GSA safe zone sticker by scraping it off my classroom window. It felt like they were saying my identity, my mission to create a safe learning environment were so offensive that it had to be forcibly removed. In addition, we were told by administration that we don't need rainbows or signs to show that we are supporting our students. But we all know that symbols and visibility do matter. For me as a closeted teenager struggling with internalized homophobia, feeling so inadequate, unworthy of love, seeing the rainbow ribbons on students' backpacks kept me going. These rainbows gave me such a strong feeling of support, love, and community absolutely nothing to do with politics. So now we're in Waukesha in 2022, facing an active attack on rainbows. 
And good luck with that battle. Have you been to a kindergarten classroom lately? There are rainbows everywhere. So as promised, I have a message of hope because of how our community has responded to these injustices and attacks. There have been dozens and dozens of students speaking at school board meetings month after month, giving powerful testimony, sharing the harms they've experienced because of these district directives. The students have been so amazing in advocating for themselves and their peers. Teachers are engaging in civil disobedience, refusing to comply, including Sarah Whaley, who is here tonight, who refused to take down her rainbow flag. She was suspended by the district and has gone public with her ongoing battle in order to raise awareness and make a difference. And that's pretty badass. <laughs> Our teachers union with Melissa Temple, who is also here tonight, working to distribute. <laughs> working to distribute rainbow safe space buttons to all thousand teachers in the district so that students can still see these powerful symbols of support, support and affirmation. In addition, our parents in the Alliance for Education in Waukesha work tirelessly to advocate for our marginalized students, including Laura Pinsenault, also here, who has been working with the media and, and filing complaints with the federal government week after week regarding these inequities. Also, our community partners, including Blue Sky, who is working with us to develop a legal strategy to combat these hateful actions. So please join me in giving a round of applause to everyone in Waukesha who has worked together in solidarity this year to advocate for our queer students and students of color. You are all amazing and inspiration to me and so many others, and together we will continue our fight so that students can feel supported, valued, and heard. And for all the students out there, the takeaway is that you are not alone. There are so many fierce advocates in your communities, even the conservative ones. So many people who love you, value you, and will defend you. So many people who want you to feel seen, respected, and given the space to feel safe so that you can express your authentic self. Now, I do not know how the Waukesha situation or any of the other attacks on our queer youth will play out. But in my experience, being persistent and driven by our moral compass leads ultimately to justice. I think about when I was in college, fighting against the 2006 Wisconsin Constitutional Amendment that ultimately defined marriage as between one man and one woman. If we had given up after that defeat, we never would have seen marriage equality achieved in Wisconsin less than a decade later. And now, the vast majority of Americans support marriage equality. All of this happened in a lifetime of my current students. So let's keep perspective and remember that we have come so far and despite the short-term setbacks, I have confidence in our young people and that under your future leadership, we will continue to make progress towards a more just world. In addition, I think about when I was a first year teacher in New Berlin, when I was warned by my colleagues that if I came out to students, it would be too dangerous and I would risk getting fired. If I had listened to their advice, I would have missed out on so many opportunities to be a positive role model in the lives of many students and community members by presenting my authentic self. Visibility matters. And if I hadn't been out, I wouldn't have been asked to start up New Berlin's first GSA. And unfortunately, the school board took active extreme steps to try to shut us down, but we refused to stop. And if we hadn't fought back, I never would have been able to engage in what has become the most rewarding part of my professional career being a GSA advisor. So be brave and be unapologetically you and know that continuing the mission is worth it because we are worth it. Thank you again. And I am deeply honored by this recognition. Our next award recipient is one of our scholarship recipients, and I have to let you know, he and I had a problem upstairs. We were doing some photos outside, and the wind kept messing up our hair during the photos. It was very difficult. I'm sure you can tell here, but you'll see in a second what I'm talking about with him. Let's give a big welcome and congratulations to Harsman Zahura.
In honor of Mother's Day tomorrow, my mom and I will be going to the Planned Parenthood in Milwaukee to protest. I implore you to join me wherever you're from and protest these rights. So if you ask most activists when they truly became activists, it wasn't when they led their first protest or joined a national organization for a cause they're passionate about. It usually came, became way before that. So for me, that journey began in third grade um, when I was at the school playground and one of the newest me members of our class was being bullied by some of my friends. And since I went to school in India and he didn't speak any Hindi at all, it was a huge problem and a lot of my friends gave him a hard time about it. Um, I was a class monitor, so I took some time to um, talk to him and you know, started eating lunch with him. And now, 10 years later, um, 15,000 miles apart, we're still friends. And I really think that those small actions can make a difference. So activism to me is about turning something bitter into something sweet. And I've done that with LGBTQ activism for myself as well. As I came to terms with uh, my own identity during my teenage years, it was tough to come out to friends and family especially when they openly disagreed with my sense of self. Um, my toughest interaction was with a friend um, who I had gotten closer to, to during COVID. And um, I realized that I needed to come out to her as we became even closer. And it was difficult. You know, she said some very hateful things and um, we had to distance each other, distance each other for a while. Um, and, but after that, we engaged in a lot of conversations and through um, a lot of that we were able to change her mind. And in that sense, the hate that she carried within her left. That is what um, began my journey. And I decided to bring back our school's GSA, as, and now it is one of the largest clubs we have on campus. Um, we host bi <laughs> We, we host bi-monthly discussions on current events relating to LG, the LGBTQ community, and we are planning a picnic for Pride with three schools and over 60 attendees. Um, we are advocating for free menstrual products in all um, school-affiliated buildings, and we hope to pass that soon. <laughs> and most important, we get to know each other and build a community. Um, growing up in India for most of my life and moving to the United States as, at the tender age of 11, uh, my culture is central to my identity. Every decision I make is shaped by my culture somehow. And like everything else in life, that culture does have its faults, um, including an acknowledgement for mental health issues, for women's rights, and for the LGBTQ community. It took a lot of time for me to acknowledge that these problems exist. And now I'm a part of the solution. I hope to grow as a person and as an Indian American while advocating for these issues within my community and beyond. During my time in high school, I organized a lot of food drives and volunteered for the Human Rights Campaign, served on the National Truth Council, Wisconsin's uh, GSAFE Youth Activist Council, and I hope to continue that as a college student, medical student, and an obstetrician gynecologist. <laughs> I wish I could go back to my five-year-old self who loved playing with dolls and wearing his mom's jewelry and makeup and tell him to not listen to his culture's definition of masculinity. Or to go back to my 12-year-old self who had his first crush and hated, hated it and cried, his, cried himself to sleep over his abnormality. And tell him to not listen to his culture's rejection of sexualities. I can't turn back time, but I can contribute to creating an accepting world that doesn't suppress identities so no other kid has to face what I did. I hope to continue this kind of activism during college and promote an accepting world, especially for my people of color peers, since many immigrant cultures still refuse to change and accept identities. I am eternally grateful to have been awarded this scholarship. I'd like to thank GSAFE, Ali, Tyrone, and Brian especially for all their support, and my fellow members of the Youth Activist Council for <laughs> lending an ear and creating campaigns out of thin air. Most of all, I'd like to thank my mom and brother for believing in me always. Thank you so much. Amir Lee's experience with activism became with coming out. Recognizing the importance of the intersection between being black and being queer, this Madison East High School senior knew how invaluable it would be to use the bravery it took to come out to help others. 
His courage and authenticity led him to become a participant in the Mann Scholars Program in middle school, then to become involved in a myriad of organizations at Madison East, such as Black Student Union, Student Congress, Athletics, and as a teacher's assistant. When queer students were hesitant to join BSU, Amir facilitated discussions and events to promote the inclusive environment that would bring people together. Their energy and hard work was also recognized by the Urban League of Greater Madison when they received the MLK Outstanding Youth Recognition Award. They will continue their advocacy for black LGBTQ plus youth at the UM Twin Cities where they plan to major in psychology to eventually become a care provider through social services and counseling. <laughs> Unfortunately, Amir is not able to be with us tonight because he also has a significant role in Madison East High School's production of SpongeBob the Musical tonight. <laughs> I'm nervous. Um, before I get started, I just want to say, uh, Quentin said he was from Florida. I am also a black, gay, male man from Texas. <laughs> I was going to start this thing off with a song, but I cannot sing, and so I'm not going to do y'all like that. So it, was great, it is with great pleasure that I accept this award tonight. First and foremost, because I was raised well, I need to first thank Eileen. You do not understand how sometimes when you get a message from a board member, you're like, what does they want? <laughs> but Eileen, I just want to really just say thank you. Thank you for seeing this black gay man who is leading with his heart and not his ego. It is one of the things that I myself have longed for as a child of a public school system. So many times we move throughout this world and we are not seen. So when it happens, it kind of throws us off guard. But I just want to say thank you. To this great organization, your mission in creating safe schools, it is not only needed, it is essential. This work is not just about for queer individuals because what we all know is when any community is inclusive for one, it is inclusive for all. I need to be honest. I don't think that this award is really for the man that's standing here before you. It is for that seven-year-old me who's overcome sexual abuse. It's for that 13-year-old boy who experienced homelessness with his family. It is for that 17 to 31-year-old man who allowed the lack of self-acceptance to dictate how he moved in the world. If I'm honest, I can recall a time when I myself was at a black institution and a professor told me I did not belong. I carried that experience with me around for a very long time. At the age of 31, I realized the most important lesson I can learn, that other people's perception is no business of mine. The theme of the night is mission continues. If this mission is going to continue, then we need more superheroes. So superheroes are those individuals that are using their superpower to serve the greater purpose. And most of the time, it's when we're putting the well-being of others ahead of ourselves. To be a superhero, you need so many different characteristics. However, the one characteristic that I wish I had learned earlier in life is that it was it's confidence. This life has taught me that confidence is not arrogance. Instead, it is the ability to see ourselves as flawed individuals and still hold ourselves as high in high regards. When I learned this lesson, it is when my life opened up for me and I am able to live the most authentic life that I have ever been able to. 
It has made me a better human, a better leader, a stronger father. And my table told me say, that Tice is my son's name. Uh, Amanda, she calls him the boss. She's, he is no longer a toddler, but he's a 10-year-old, and he is the most courageous person, and he is my superhero. It has also made me a stronger partner to a man that it took me 38 years to find. To my husband, thank you for being my personal superhero. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me what having a superhero as a partner looks like, and thank you for supporting me even when my ideas are larger than myself. To every person in this room, especially to those who might be still seeking to find out who you are, if you hear nothing else tonight, hear this. Before you can be a superhero to anyone else, you must be a superhero to yourself. So, in the words of some of my greatest heroes and writers, I'm going to leave you with a couple of quotes. Number one, to thine own self be true, Shakespeare. Number two, I have found the greatest love of all inside of me. The greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Learning to love yourself. It is the greatest love of all. Now, if y'all was true fans, y'all would've been on y'all feet singing that song, because that's Whitney Houston. <laughs> Finally, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and go and do that. Because what the world needs more than anything is more people who have come alive, Howard Thurman. Again, I am so honored by this recognition, but I do not do this work alone. With the help of therapy, because it's important, I want to say that. To my village, it is important. To my Madison community who is here with me tonight, I thank you for accepting me. This little black boy from Houston, Texas is so important. And to all the shoulders that I stand on, I am who I am today because of you. Thank you. Let's bring up our next scholarship recipient. A big congratulations to Astrid Zambori. that telling our stories first to ourselves and then to one another and to the world is a revolutionary act. This is my story. To start, my chosen name is Astrid. As a queer deaf child, I was endlessly bullied and harassed through elementary and middle school. Eventually, my pain built to a point that my former name was no longer mine. I had to reclaim myself. At the age of 16, I have merely written the first chapters in my story. As my name, Astrid, gains personal history and significance, I draw inspiration from the words of Mock and other activists. Years of inaccessibility overseen by ignorant adults at my public school district, Superior High School, by the way. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> but years of this inaccessibility ingrained in me the skills that I needed to survive. I developed grit and a fire in my stomach, or rather, in my heart. My story as an activist began in middle school. After coming out as transgender, they ridiculed me relentlessly. A person I once trusted made a death threat against me. Another encouraged me to commit suicide. I lacked a true support system. 
My middle school did not have any clubs related to the LGBTQ community, nor did they seem to actually care about us, students like me who were hurting. Because of this, I took it upon myself to start a gay straight alliance. I did this with the help of my friends and a small network of amazing supportive teachers. Alongside them, I was supported by my American Sign Language interpreter, a strong and inspirational woman who teaches me something new every single day. Within the span of one year, I managed to establish the GSA, promote events for my members within the community, and highlight or create safe spaces within our middle school. We struggled and we succeeded. Our first initiative within the GSA was to spread positivity. Easy, right? We did this by displaying posters around the school with sayings such as, love is there for everyone, treat others the way you want to be treated, to which our peers responded by destroying them. Of course, we felt defeated by this. But on the sunnier side, after noticing that my members of the GSA wore loose-fitting hoodies for safety and comfort, I suggested that we design GSA hoodies. <clears throat> Through this, we helped our members feel connected to one another and create a sense of pride. Not only that, the student body finally recognized their GSA and interest grew. Even today, three years later, I still see people wearing their hoodies at my high school. Now, as a senior graduating a year early, I lead the GSA in my high school. Recently, we just celebrated Solidarity Week day of silence and made many of these cute little rainbow pins to distribute within our student body. <clears throat> in the past few months, we plan to hold more events and get more involved in our, with our community with movie nights and clothing drives. Beyond my GSA involvement in the past five years, I have also worked with the Hedrick Martin Institute. You should look that up. <laughs> it's a large nonprofit in New York for LGBTQ and queer youth as an employee and an intern for two years. My current roles included creating a safe virtual chat space for queer youth ages to 12 to 20 and monitoring the content that we talked about, along with giving our facilitators and our organization feedback when we complete the chat. During my internship with them, I learned about a lot of things like consent, building healthy relationships, and navigating rocky patches in my life. As my life moves on to college, I'm going to be attending the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really excited about it. As I move on to that, I hope that I will be able to gain more roles at the Hedrick Martin Institute, as well as invest myself deeper in the LGBT community. I will strive to provide friendship and support for other members of my community and create representation within STEM. This fall, when I first started applying for colleges, I felt insecure about my choice to pursue STEM, or specifically agriculture in space. I wasn't sure if pursuing STEM was possible for me, or if I could even do it. The representation that it's giving in STEM does not represent people like me. They do not represent Native Americans, queer people, or members of the queer LGBT community, or deaf people like me. However, I feel empowered by the support given like scholarships by these, like these, along with the encouragement of my, my mentors and community members. After I complete my time in college, and I come back down to from Dad. Sorry. <laughs> After I complete my time in college and achieve my goals of pursuing agriculture in space, I plan to come back down to Earth and establish a cafe. <laughs> With the collaboration of my wonderful friends, we hope to create a physically safe environment for queer youth in our chosen city. If all goes to plan, eventually we will add a youth shelter and other services to offer more support. It is possible that we might also start our own nonprofit, similar to others like the GSA, this GSA, and the Hedrick Martin Institute. We have been inspired 
by the struggles we have endured as members of this community. And we have also been empowered and, and empowered by local organizations in Northern Wisconsin, such as Together for You. And I hope that I will be able to give back to them through representation, support, and eventually a nonprofit. As a revolutionary act, I have told you my story and my dreams. My story continues, and my name is now my own. Janet Mock finishes this quote with, it is an act that can lead to love, understanding, and community. I thank my parents for supporting me through the first 16 years of my life, and my, my teachers for nurturing and developing my curiosity. I also thank my interpreters for providing me accessibility in every single place possible. And most of all, I thank you safe for the scholarship and you for your time. Thank you for honoring me with the Judy Devereaux Community Activist Award. My dream has been to generate love and respect for the transgender and non-binary community by elevating our stories and sharing hopeful messages. Um, now, maybe more than ever, our trans and LGBTQ youth um, are under attack in our and many other states, and now more than ever, they need to be reminded in big, bold ways that they belong and that they are loved. When I am creating art in my studio and I have moments of doubt, moments where I'm questioning if what I'm doing really matters, I'm reminded of the saying that all rivers come from streams. Our individual efforts might seem small if we're only looking at one aspect, but when we pool our efforts, putting our minds and creativity to work together, we realize just how powerful we are. When I pooled my efforts with Brian Jay and the G-Safe team and Megan McDonald at Fair Wisconsin, we created a powerful campaign that ignited hope and an outpouring of love in our community. Um, and now through the efforts of a myriad of folks across the nation, there are hundreds of your love billboards across the country, all of which have been grassroots funded and supported. The movement for LGBTQ rights is based on a foundation laid by people of color in civil rights and has been consistently pushed forward by black trans women. People like Sunshine Rainbow in our own community who is constantly organizing events and showing up for justice, often with her own bejeweled megaphone. I am so grateful to the many leaders in this community and beyond who are voices of hope and vision in challenging times. People like Patrick Faribault at Our Lives Magazine sharing and centering LGBT stories and history. People like Dick Wagner, Mark Pocan, Tammy Baldwin, Tony Evers, uh, Mayor Satya, um, and all of these people who are leading in public office. Community organizers like the folks at Madison Area Trans Association who recently put together a Trans Joy event to offset bigotry and hatred. I want to thank all of these folks and so many others who I don't even know yet, who are working daily to make our community safer and who inspire me forward. I also have to take a moment to thank my wife, Gina Senarigi, who has been my copy editor and speechwriter, helping me to articulate and amplify trans joy and activism throughout my art career. And I wanna thank my parents-in-law, Rudy, uh, Rudy and Shirley Senarigi, and my sister and brother-in-law, Angie and Ryan Beach. They have made me a stronger activist, and they have offered me a vision of what a supportive family for a trans kid should look like. Thank you. <laughs> I 
I think that it is beyond important that each of us use our gifts to support this community. I did not set out to be a community activist. I just saw the pain of so many queer youth and I needed to do something actionable, tangible, and helpful. I am grateful to have found ways to support our community with my art and I hope to inspire everyone I meet to use your unique gifts to support love, belonging, and inclusion. I have heard that Judy Devereaux herself had a bold capacity for love, and it is my hope for all of us to spread vibrant, colorful messages of love, especially today. Thank you all. Thank you. Dreams are made to be.